a new series of exam question walkthrough videos. So the topic now is redox titrations this is the first one. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is complete the um, titration readings table. So obviously we'll just work out the difference and that gives us the titra. Just make sure you report your titras to the correct number of decimal places. So that zero is needed there, likewise that one. In terms of the mean, just remember that you never use the trial result. Um, and we're looking for results that are within 0.1 centimetre cubed of each other. So we call those concordant results. So two and three are concordant. One's just a little bit too far out. So we take the mean of the two concordant results and we get 23.80. Moving on to the next part, so the uncertainty in each burette reading is that. So if you remember, a titra is based on two readings, so we double the error, divide by what's been measured, so for titration 1, it's that, times 100, 0.43%. You'll see I've got a diagram here of the experiment, which I'm going to use in the calculation, but I'll use it now as well. So describe and explain how the student could determine the end point of this titration accurately. So when the students carried out this reaction here, so they've taken the IO3 minus ions from the um, solid that they've dissolved, they've reacted it with acid and an excess of iodide ions, so that's that reaction there, they generate iodine. So this conical flask will be brown in colour. As the thiosulfate goes in, it reacts with the iodine and it gets less and less brown, so it actually starts becoming yellow. So towards the end point, the colour of the flask will go, it'll actually go very pale yellow. So what you do at that point is you add starch indicator. That makes it go a sort of blue-black colour. And then when the sort of magic drop of thiosulfate goes in and reacts with the final bit of iodine, the contents of the flask goes colourless because all the iodine's gone. Okay, so we'll move on to the calculation. So I'll refer to this again um, as I go through the calculation. So basically what they've done, they've taken a known mass of B, which is XiO3, I'm calling it. It contains this IO3 minus ion and a group 1 metal ion as well. So that'll generate aqueous IO3 minus ions. It's then put into a volumetric flask, 250 cm cubed. And then they've taken out 25 centimetres cubed of the IO3 minus. They've reacted it with acid and excess Ki and it's generated the iodine. The iodine that's produced is um, estimated by titration with sodium thiosulfate of that concentration. And that was the main titra that we calculated at the top of the question. So the first thing we'll do is work out the moles of thiosulfate ions used in the titration. Concentration times volume in decimetres cubed. So we've got that many moles of thiosulfate. So this is the titration reaction. So obviously the moles of iodine that must have been present, so that's these moles here, will be half of that. So 1.785 times 10 to the minus 3. So the next thing we need to do is jump into this top equation, but we need to appreciate that these, this iodine here is that. Okay, so remember that iodine was made in the first reaction and then titrated, so it's the same thing. So sometimes students would treble because they see a 3 there and obviously a 1 there. So you don't do that. So the moles of IO3 minus, therefore, in 25 cm cubed must be that many. So therefore, the moles of IO3 minus in the 250 cm cubed flask must be 10 times that. So that's 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3. And then just remember, they came from that, which comes from that. So that's also the moles of XiO3 in the 1.55 gram sample. So from that we can calculate the MR of B, mass over moles, which comes out at 260.5. So all we need to do now is subtract from that the MR of IO3, and that'll give us the MR of X. And then we can go to group one and find out what it is. So when you take the MR of the IO3 minus away from the MR of B, you get 85.6, which means that B is RB IO3 rubidium iodate 5. 